So last year I made a video about how to migrate windows to another disc for free and I did not make it thinking that it was going to become a very large video but it has become my most watched, liked, and commented on videos by a long shot. And with that I know a lot of people have had difficulties with it. I know that Minitool has been giving people a lot of problems. I have been doing a lot of updates to the pinned comment in the description to put up a different version. Um, tell people if they're running into a certain issue to do something in particular. And I know that all of that is not helping as much. So I wanted to give a new solution that you can use. It's not new in terms of when it became available, but new to you guys. And I'll also be doing an update to the mini tool video in a few weeks. So stay subscribed if you do want to check that out. Today, however, we are going to circumvent the major issue when trying to migrate windows. And that is usually that if you are using a program within windows, those tools have to do something to basically shut windows off when doing the copying because the files are active and you cannot copy active files. So for example, the mini tool that we used, it goes into its own kind of boot media thing and does the rest of the copying that way. The tool I'm gonna to introduce you to today does something very similar, but it basically runs its own little mini version of Linux and it has a copy tool and it has a partition tool, which becomes very handy in a few instances, which I will go over in a little bit, but this is very easy to do. You do need a USB stick for this, but we're going to be using RescueZilla. Now RescueZilla started off as just being a graphical interface for CloneZilla and CloneZilla is a little complex for and intimidating for people who are not technically savvy. So I definitely didn't want to go that route. And RescueZilla is still not the easiest. It's not nearly as easy as using Minitool or Aomi or any of those programs. But again, a lot of those programs now have paywalled being able to migrate windows and you have to use older versions to be able to do it for free or into a bunch of issues. Lots of people know about that now. So first thing you wanna do is go ahead and go to the rescuezilla.com website. This will kind of outline what RescueZilla is and we're going to go ahead and click on download. Now with this, it's going to tell you you're going to need a computer, obviously. You're going to need at least one gig of RAM, which basically every computer at this day and age is going to have more than that, so you're fine. You're going to want a USB stick. The faster, the better. Um, but also, you can use a very small USB stick. Uh, in this example, I'm using a four gig USB stick. And if you want to do imaging, you, you'd need a, an external USB hard drive, but we're not going to be doing imaging. We're going to be doing cloning, so we are perfectly fine. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and download this ISO. And we're also going to download uh, Balena Etcher. I typically like using Rufus, but I was running into issues with Rufus and the RescueZilla ISO. So I like using whatever they're suggesting. And we're just going to go ahead and download the portable version. So once those are done downloading, you can go ahead and launch the Etcher program. It's a very simple, nice interface. Um, we're gonna go ahead and choose Flash from File. We're gonna choose our RescueZilla. Open that up. We're gonna select our target. It's gonna be this generic Flash, which is four gigs. We're gonna select that and we're gonna flash it. Once this pops up, you're gonna press yes. And this process is gonna take maybe one or two minutes, really depends on the speed of your computer and the flash drive that you are using. Now, while that's running, I may as well show you the drive that I'm gonna be using. So if we go into the partition manager, we're gonna see that I have this team SSD here, it's 500 gigs. And the reason I chose a smaller SSD is one common thing that I noticed in my last video a lot of people are converting from a larger hard drive to a smaller SSD. Now, SSD prices have plummeted and it's very easy to get one and two terabyte SSDs now for a very good price. But I also understand the situation. So I am gonna do this whole example with a SSD that is smaller than the original drive. So my original drive is a terabyte and we're gonna be putting it onto this 500 gig one instead. All right, our flash is complete. 
That is awesome. So now the next step we're gonna have to do is to properly shut down Windows. Now, if you don't know, when you go ahead and you select shut down, Windows doesn't actually fully shut down the system. It basically hibernates a whole bunch of stuff. This is the case with Windows 10 and Windows 11. So there are two ways to make sure that you properly shut it down. You can either hold shift while you press the shutdown button. Now, this is a very easy way to do it, but I don't like it because there's no way to know if it actually is properly shutting down that way, if it's registering the shift key, what have you. So what I like doing is running uh, the command prompt, run it as admin, and we're just gonna do shutdown slash s slash f slash t z and space zero and that is going to go ahead and shut down the computer now what you're going to want to do is go ahead and boot the computer back on but before it boots into windows we're going to want to make sure that we either get into the bios and change the boot order or we manually override the boot sequence um, using f12 usually on your keyboard now I'm not entirely sure why my EVGA capture card captures everything in green. Um, this is not really how it actually looks, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab that, that generic flash um, UEFI. So we're gonna double click, we're gonna click on that one and it's gonna launch into RescueZilla. Now, again, this is all green. It's not gonna look green for you. Um, and we're gonna do English. If you don't do anything, it's gonna automatically go into the default English version. You're gonna end up seeing some command prompt looking information here. It's just basically booting up into a Linux distro. So give it a couple seconds and it will go ahead and boot into that Linux distro. Once that's done, you will be greeted with RescueZilla. It actually automatically opens up the program. If we go up into the top right hand corner here though, you can see that we are basically in a desktop environment. So if you're copying from a smaller disk to a larger disk, you can skip ahead to this point in the video that I will leave on screen here. If you're copying from a larger disk to a smaller disk though, follow these steps. I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen when we try to clone from a larger to a smaller disk. It's gonna give us an error. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and click clone. We're gonna go to next. We're gonna choose our A data, which is the source drive. We're gonna click next. And our destination is that 500 gig one. We're gonna click next. It's gonna give us all this information. You can leave this all as default. We're gonna click next. And it's gonna say, hey, you can't do this. RescueZilla doesn't automatically shrink partitions. And they say yet. This is an open source program that they're constantly updating. So it would be great if at one point they do get to, get to that point that it can automatically shrink partitions. But right now you have to end up following these steps here and I'm gonna walk you through those steps. So the nice thing about it being a Linux distro is that it has a bunch of applications and one of them is Gparted. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you close RescueZilla. We're gonna launch Gparted. And let's go ahead and uh, make this a little bigger. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab the source drive. And as you can see here, this partition there's only 70 gigs in it, um, but it's taking up 953 gigs of space. What you're gonna wanna do is resize this partition to be smaller than the size of your destination drive. So in reality, we could make this 100 gigs, and then afterwards we would expand it to fill up the rest of the space if we wanted to be safe. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just make this 400. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this drive and we're going to go ahead and do resize. Now you can either drag up top here or you can go ahead and type in. So we're going to type in 40,000 and press tab and it's not going to work properly. So we're going to do the drag method and I'm going to drag this up to be just over four. So this is going to be 400 gigs right here. And it's telling me that there's going to be 568 gigs left over on the, the drive, that's totally fine. This is only gonna work if you do not have more than this space filled up on your drive. So you have to make sure that if you're going to a smaller drive, that the contents on your Windows drive is going to be less than the size of the, the destination drive. Another big thing that a lot of people have been confused about on my last video is that when they're like, hey, 
I'm just trying to move my OS, but it's copying my whole C drive. What's up with that? Your C drive is a combination of a bunch of things that includes Windows, your program files, um, your user files, and all of those together are your OS. So it is copying your whole C drive. Now you can minimize some of that stuff. You can make it smaller. You can get rid of a lot of data to help make the move easier to uh, shrink the size of the volume. I have a video on that if you do want to check it out. But in the end, what you have to understand is that your C drive is your OS drive. And whenever you're doing using a tool, it's going to be migrating your OS or copying your OS or copying the disk. It's going to be copying that whole C drive. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and click resize and move. We're going to see that it's going to kind of chop it up and um, partition our drive here. And we're going to click the check mark. Now, depending on the size of the drive, this may take 10, 15, 20 minutes. So I highly suggest you go grab a water, grab a coffee, go take a quick walk um, and come back to this in a few minutes. All right, so it is finished and we can see here that it has now split this partition into two. Um, the 554 gigs is now unallocated and we have the 398. So these partitions will now fit within our 400 gig drive. So we can go ahead and close Gparted. We're gonna go ahead and jump back into RescueZilla. We're gonna go back to clone. We're gonna go next. We're gonna go ahead and choose our source drive. Next, destination drive, next. And now we're gonna make sure that it only has the partitions that we want. So it's already automatically avoiding the unallocated one. So that is fantastic. We're gonna click next. It's gonna warn you that it's gonna override your partitions and anything that's on that drive. We're gonna go ahead and press next. It's gonna warn you again. We're gonna press yes. And now it is gonna go ahead and start cloning the drive. So this is probably gonna take the longest amount of time, um, depending on, again, the amount of data that you have, the size of your drives, um, the speed of the USB that you're using. So go ahead, go to sleep, go for a walk, uh, walk your dog, say hi to somebody, give somebody a hug, go touch some grass. I don't know, go do something. Come back to this when it's finished. All right, and we had a very small drive, so it only took three minutes and everything was a success. So that's awesome. If we go ahead and click next, we close this out. We're gonna go ahead and go into Gparted. And as you can see, if we hop into the 500 gig drive, it moved everything over exactly as it was on the other drive. Now we do have 48 gigs that are unallocated. This is gonna be super important if you did the steps that I was showing, but also if you're moving from a smaller drive to a larger drive, you're gonna have unallocated space. We're gonna do something very similar to what we did before. We're gonna go ahead and go to this partition. You have to make sure that it is the, the last partition. You cannot extend a partition over top of another one. So if we want to extend this one into this, we would have to move this partition down. And that is also part of the resize and move is it allows you to move the partitions around um, to other areas, right? So you want to make sure that your partition is adjacent to the unallocated and we're gonna go ahead and go to resize and move. And we're gonna make sure that there's nothing following. So I'm gonna go ahead in here and I'm just gonna go ahead and type 99999, press tab, and it's gonna grab all the rest of that space. So we are using the whole size of the drive. We're gonna press okay, press apply. Shouldn't take too long, but this will take more time than it was to split the uh, allocated drives um, into multiple partitions. Usually combining them does take a little bit longer. So let's see how long this one takes. Well, completely lied, very quick process. Um, didn't even have to stop recording for anything. So we can close here and once it refreshes, we can see that it is using everything exactly as it was here. Um, we have it all other than the unallocated because we expanded that drive over 
and we're good to go. So if you watched my last video, another way that this rescue Zilla process differs pretty heavily from the uh, mini tool wizard is that RescueZilla is basically creating an exact clone of your drive that also includes the boot manager. So if you go into your BIOS and you try to go ahead and change your uh, boot sequence to make sure that it boots from the new drive, you may notice that it's not going to have the new drive listed as a boot manager. It's still going to have the original one. So what you're going to have to do is you have to actually disconnect the old drive and allow the new drive to be listed as the boot manager. Then what you can go ahead and do is plug in the old drive. So this is much easier if you have a SATA drive because you can plug it in once Windows starts to boot. Um, and then you'll be able to go ahead and see that. So as you can see here, now my team light manager, uh, my team light drive is listed as the boot drive. So if we go ahead and press F10, and then we go back into Windows. And now if we go ahead and open up our Explorer, you can see that we are on the 500 gig disk. And if I open up the partitions, you'll be able to see that we're on the 500 gig disk. Now, if I wanna go ahead and install that old drive back in, I can do it. You do have to go ahead and check your BIOS if you do it while the computer is off and make sure that it is choosing the right boot manager from the new drive um, and not from the old drive. This is a little bit of a difficulty with going through this process, but keeping it unplugged while booting and then plugging it in afterwards is usually the easiest solution. If your old drive is an NVMe drive, it makes it a little bit more difficult to do so. And what I would suggest you do is use something like an external enclosure. You can do this for three and a half inch and two and a half inch drives as well. You can use an external enclosure, turn it into basically a USB, and then plug that in, go ahead and clear off any of the information that you want on there, format it, and then go ahead and reinstall it back into your computer if that's what you want to do. Now, another thing to keep in mind, for whatever reason, sometimes these partitions may end up getting a drive letter. If they do and you end up seeing them here, you can just go ahead and you can make it so you can change the drive letter and you can remove the drive letter from them. I haven't had this come up with RescueZilla, but I know it comes up a lot with Minitool, so just keep that in mind. And again, once you confirm that you have all of your stuff over from your old drive, you are clear to wipe it and do whatever you'd like with that old drive, whether you want to use it as a game drive or what have you, as long as you confirm that all your stuff came over the way that you wanted it to, you should be good to go to go ahead and format that old drive. So this process is quite a bit different from the mini tool process that I showed before, but I really do hope I helped you out. If you run into any major issues or you get stuck, you're welcome to leave a comment, but the best place to get a hold of me is in the Discord. Go ahead and join there and open up a help desk ticket, and that would be the best way to get help. I can't help with everything, but I do try my best. Um, so feel free to reach out. But I really do hope that this video helps you with the process of cloning your Windows drive and makes it as easy as possible. If it did, I really would appreciate it if you like, subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. I will have some follow-up videos about Minitool, about Aomi, um, about some other methods as well, some really great tools that I use. So get subscribed if you do want to go ahead and check out those videos. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, Slot Slime and Stepback, and thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you do want to check out any of my other computer help and guide videos, you can go ahead and check out this playlist right up here. As always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Saturday.